State of the Nation with Zororo Makamba. Privatization. That's the word we've heard a lot over the past two years. What does it mean? Why do we need it? And how best can we do it? And where are we on all the plans and promises that were made on this? Well, let's talk about it on this week's State of the Nation. There were some celebrations when Air Zimbabwe got a new plane recently. Well, maybe it's not exactly a brand new plane, but this was some good news. Now, the company has a long haul plane, finally. But the question is, can Air Zim manage the plane well? Can they afford it? This is the question we have for so many of our parastatals. Does a country really need state-owned enterprises to sell or not to sell? A lot of academics all over the world have fought over this question for many years now. Now on one side, some guys say, no, don't sell. You need state-owned enterprises. You need these companies. We can't leave everything to the private players. There should be some level of state control. You can't trust private investors to protect the poorest of people. Then on the other side, some say the government has no business being in business. Sell everything. These companies make too much losses. They must go. Where is Zimbabwe in all of this? Well, we're somewhere in the middle. Now, Zimbabwe wants to sell, but not all of them. So what is the plan for privatization? How does the government want to do it? And how is the plan going? Let's take a look. In October 2018, Finance Minister Mtuling Mube issued the Transitional Stabilization Program. We've talked about this before on this program. This is a package of reforms proposed for the period of 2018 to 2020. Now, what was the idea on privatization? It was quite a big plan. He said he wanted to privatize up to 35 state-owned companies. How much progress has been made so far? And where are we on this plan? Let's take a look at some of the major plans. The NRZ. Now this was supposed to be the big deal, but we all know what happened. The plan to strike a partnership with a group of diaspora investors didn't go as planned. Now the NRZ is still looking for investors. What about telecoms? Well, there's a plan to sell Tel1 and Net1. The idea is to sell both these companies together as one. Tel1 has already appointed an international company, PwC, as the advisor for the deal. Mdouli reckons he can get 350 US million dollars from this sale, but there's a holdup a big $380 million holdup. That's 380 US dollars. That's how much Taiwan owes a number of creditors. Some of these debts go way back to the PTC days. The taxpayer will have to take over this debt before the company can be sold. And this is one of the major problems. It's hard to sell any of these companies when they have so many debts. No investor wants that. What else do we have? CSC. It used to slaughter over a thousand cattle per month. CSC also used to export beef to Europe, but now it's been in bad shape for about 20 years. CSC has now entered into a partnership with a company called Boosted Beef. The company is putting up a 3 megawatt solar plant in Blue Isle. They plan to restart operations in 2020. We'll be watching to see how this goes. We've just talked about Air Zimbabwe. The company was put under administration. The plan was to find a partner for the airline, but it owes over 300 million US dollars. Should we be keeping it? That's the question. What's happening in agriculture? Well, we have the Arda farms. They used to be productive, but now they've struggled for many years now. Arda has now engaged new partners to make something happen. They have revived production at 15 Arda estates. There's a new board there too, and it even includes some former white farmers. All hands on deck. That's what we want to see. And what's the plan at the GMB? Well, it's been split up. Now we have a separate company called Silo Foods. They became a standalone company in 2019. They now have over 80 retail outlets. Then there is POSB. Now, if you're of a certain age, you remember the POSB bank book. Everyone had it. That's how important this bank was. It's also being privatized. The bank is also engaged advisors for this. This is one of the few parastatals that are ever actually not making big losses. Then there's the Industrial Development Corporation, the IDC. Now, this is one of the biggest state-owned companies. They're also selling companies like the Willowvale Car Assembly and Kemplex, the company that makes fertilizers. The IDC has now been changed, it will no longer be just a big conglomerate. Now, there will be a company meant to support local industries. We've seen them truly giving them some 240 million to do this. They've since started giving out loans to SMEs. What's the plan at Zessa? Oh, Zessa. The plan was split up into bits and pieces some years ago. Now the idea is to turn it back into one company. We're waiting on the progress on this. It was also planned to sell 17 mines under the ZMDC. This hasn't happened. In fact, government has withdrawn the sale. Are you keeping up? Okay, it's a bit much to take in, but there's still so many companies to talk about. But that's just the point. The plans are great, but we need to see a lot more action into the implementing of them. There's been too many delays. Remember the plan under the TSP was to get all this done by the end of 2020. It's 2020 now. 
but we haven't seen any progress on the privatization bit. Yes, we know, privatization isn't easy. Many countries have done it the wrong way. They end up selling everything. Some of them are trying to reverse things right now. But other countries have done it well, and we need to learn lessons from them. We've even had some funding to help us get this done the right way. Zimbabwe had a 3.2 million US dollar grant from the African Development Bank. There's also some money from the EU. These funds were meant to review the performances of some of these companies so that we can decide exactly what to do with them. This way, we can do it right. So, it's easy to see why privatization is important for the economy. But here's some numbers for you. 107, that's the number of parastatals we have. Almost all of these companies are making losses. 300 million US dollars, that's the amount of losses these companies make every year. 3 billion US dollars, that's how much these companies owe. 1 billion US dollars, that's how much these companies spend on salaries and perks for the big chefs every year. There's a lot of corruption. The taxpayer is paying for all of it. So, obviously it makes sense to get rid of them. This is what Mutuling Mube himself said about these companies. Restructuring and reforming will inevitably require a degree of creative destruction. Yes, creative destruction. It's time, Mr. Minister, to walk the talk on this. It must happen. Zimbabwe cannot afford all these companies. It's time to get back to the TSP plan on privatization. We need to do it quickly, but we also need to do it right. So, let's get on with it.